Nitrogen is one of the main biogeochemical cycles on this planet. It is vital and essential for life, and this video is going to discuss and analyze the cycling of nitrogen throughout Earth in different spheres, such as the biosphere, geosphere, atmosphere, and hydrosphere. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The chemistry of nitrogen is absolutely fascinating because the majority of nitrogen on the planet is held in the reservoir or sink, which is the atmosphere, which is around 78% nitrogen, which is an inert gas. It doesn't really chemically react with many gases or elements or is not easily reactive. So this element is going through different changes throughout the cycle chemically through different areas of the planet, mostly involving microorganisms and microbial activity whilst or when it gets into the soil and how it is converted and changed into different nitrogen compounds involving both oxygen, carbon and hydrogen. This element is fantastic in terms of its importance for life and how it cycles through our planet. There are three main processes that occur to nitrogen throughout this cycle on Earth. The first one is nitrogen fixation. The acquirement of nitrogen as a gas and fixing it or taking it or putting it into a different environment and changing its chemistry into a compound. Then further changing this compound through what's called nitrification. And finally, to remove certain elements from that nitrogen compound to make it go back into nitrogen as a gas, which is called denitrification. So these chemical reactions can either be oxidation, which is the addition of oxygen, which also can also mean the removal of hydrogen, and this would involve a loss of an electron or electrons, which will make it a cation, which is a positive charge, because you are removing an electron, therefore there's more protons than electrons in that atom, making it positive charge. In reverse, we also have a reduction chemical reaction or process, whereby the nitrogen compound is removing an oxygen or adding a hydrogen, which would then gain electrons, which will make it an anion or negative charge, because you're adding more free electrons to the nitrogen compound and that would make more electrons versus protons making it a negative charge. So the chemistry of nitrogen is fascinating in how it changes between organic nitrogen and inorganic nitrogen. And in reference to organic nitrogen that is where it is derived or comes from or is sourced from organic matter or you add a carbon element to the mix. The nitrogen cycle will start here in the atmosphere. The atmosphere contains three main gases, argon, oxygen and nitrogen. Argon is about 0.9%, oxygen is about 20.8% and nitrogen about 78%. And nitrogen occurs as N2 in the atmosphere as a gas which means that there is two atoms bonded together through the electrons and this is a very strong bond and it's called a triple bond. So this is an inert gas, it doesn't really react with any other elements or gases in the atmosphere. It has to have extra energy in order to react chemically and in terms of the nitrogen cycle it has to be changed and added to to make a larger nitrogen compound in order to be useful for biomass, useful for the ecosystem, and useful for plants in terms of nutrient and macronutrient uptake. Now, in terms of macronutrients, this is a large amount of nitrogen that is required by vegetation on Earth in order to sustain life and growth. Now, nitrogen is a key part of the biomass requirements and therefore it is important to understand where the majority of nitrogen comes from, which is the atmosphere. In order to access the large quantity of nitrogen as gas in the atmosphere, it has to be fixated. And this means that it's taken from the atmosphere, there is movement from that sphere into the oceans or terrestrial geosphere and in terms of the biosphere, in terms of bacteria. Now these microorganisms act as a 
transfer machine of acquiring this gas from the atmosphere, nitrogen, and physically and chemically changing the nitrogen into a larger compound which can be used then by plants and biomass. Now this occurs in the soil around the A horizon which is in the topsoil which is usually below a very thin O horizon. So this bacterial activity comes in two different types. There's free living bacteria, which is bacteria that hangs out in the soil by itself and does a job of taking that nitrogen and convert it into mostly ammonia. And there's also symbiotic bacteria, which actually works with plants and root nodules. And they kind of like nestle and hang out on the roots of plants in the soil. And they work with the plant to actively take the nitrogen convert it into ammonia and that would then start the process of allowing the plant to uptake this source of nitrogen because the gas N2 cannot be obtained or absorbed or uptaken by any biomass on the geosphere. So basically any plants can't use this gas, it has to be changed first and these bacterial masses in the soil both free living by itself or attached to plant roots or root nodules are going to do this job for it like a factory of taking in the raw materials which is which is the gas and changing it into a usable product which is going to be the ammonia which is NH3 or we could have chemical or man-made addition of nitrogen which can happen through what's called the Haber-Bosch technique which is where you have nitrogen gas plus hydrogen at very high temperatures and it creates a artificial or synthetic nitrogen which can be used as fertilizer and it kind of revolutionized the fertilizer industry for agriculture back in the early 1900s and it's been used ever since to increase the amount of nitrogen because once humans realized that nitrogen was a key ingredient in plant growth and plant health and soil fertility and soil health that's when we realized we can artificially increase the amount of nitrogen through this technique to increase the yield and growth of our crops and plants. And finally, we have a natural, very quick addition of nitrogen, which is going to be lightning when it hits the ground, so cloud to ground lightning. You also have precip and rain and overland flow taking nitrogen from the A horizon, which is very close to the surface, and washing it to other areas via gravity. And we also have the addition of nitrogen through organic waste, through human and animal waste, will add in extra nitrogen. So there's three main ways, biological through bacteria, chemical through man-made, and atmospheric through this addition of nitrogen. Now the nitrogen is in the soil, in the A horizon, it is being converted and transferred into different nitrogen compounds. Firstly, ammonia, NH3, by the three methods mentioned earlier. Now this is nitrification, the process of changing and becoming larger nitrogen compounds through the addition of either oxygen or hydrogen through bacterial activity. Now, nitrites, which is NO2 minus or negative, is the next step in nitrification. So basically, you take the nitrogen and add in the oxygen. So you have oxidation or oxidizing. Then we have further oxidation, which means to add a, another oxygen element or atom to the mix, to the compound, which makes nitrates. Now, nitrates are very important because this is the compound that will most easily be absorbed and uptaken or used as food by plants through the roots in the soil and uptake through the plant and this is used as the food, the protein, it's used in various plant processes and mechanisms for growth in terms of photosynthesis, in terms of proteins, amino acids and also the health of the plant as well, not only the growth, but the health. And then further, if you add more hydrogen to ammonia, you get ammonium, which is process of ammonification, which again can be used through the plants as food, but the most common is nitrates, NO3 negative. And these are used both with the bacteria on the roots, which is symbiotic, 
or mostly with the free living bacteria, which is cyanobacteria, which is responsible for the oxidation. An important part of the nitrogen cycle is called assimilation. This is the term used for when the plant uptakes the nitrogen compounds, mostly nitrates and some ammonium, and uses that nitrogen for various functions and processes within the plant, namely growth and health of the plant. And this is the part where the plant, in addition to other macronutrients and micronutrients, create photosynthesis through the chlorophyll and the chloroplasts and produce the growth of vegetation, which then forms the basis for all food webs, food chains, ecosystems, biomes, and environments, and how both the biotic and abiotic combine together to form the beautiful living planet that we experience. So the process of assimilation is very important in how these root nodules and these bacterial types, both free living and symbiotic, are used to take the nitrogen in the soil, the nitrates and ammonium, and transport and pass this macronutrient which is required in very large quantities into the plant for its functions. Now there's a lot more organic chemistry involved in the actual bacteria and how they transfer the nitrogen from the soil into the plants when the plants use it inside its roots and inside its the plant. Now if you want to learn more about the actual bacteria and how they chemically transfer and move the nitrogen compounds into the roots. I'm sure there are other videos and other textbooks and journals that will describe the complexities of organic chemistry with these bacteria. But in this case, in this video, it's just the understanding and appreciation that both nitrates and ammonium are assimilated from the soil from that abiotic component and moved through the bacteria, through the nodules, into the biotic component, which is the plants. So far, we discussed the fixation of atmospheric nitrogen, the gas, into the soil, into the top layer of the soil, the A horizon, through bacterial and microorganisms and microbial activity, and transferring that gas into organic and inorganic compounds of nitrogen, namely ammonia first, NH3, then nitrates and nitrites and ammonium, and how the plant is gonna use mostly nitrates as their food source and plant growth and photosynthesis and to gain biomass. However, the cycle is a cycle because there is movement from the soil, from that nitrogen compounds, back into the gas form of nitrogen, which is N2, back into the atmosphere. Now, this is done through certain bacteria called Pseudomonas bacteria. And these are bacteria that reduce the compound, which means to remove or take away the oxygen or hydrogen from that compound just to release the single nitrogen. And it's gonna combine with other nitrogen in the atmosphere and again that triple bond making it very strong so it stays there and is retained in the atmosphere due to the chemical bonding of these elements so therefore bacteria play an extremely important role not only in the acquisition and change of nitrogen but also of the removal of nitrogen from the soil to maintain the balance obviously too much of one thing will create an imbalance and not keep the soil and the plants and atmosphere an equilibrium. It will bring the system out of balance. So these are also important to put the nitrogen back into the atmosphere. Any working system is made up of smaller components that work together. One of these small components in the nitrogen cycle is involved with decomposers. The organic matter which is decomposing within the soil, which is humus, and this can contain leaf litter, can contain organisms that is dead and decaying flesh or matter. And the nutrients from the organic material is going to be broken down by bacteria and fungi or fungi and actively 
removed from the matter and put back into the soil. Now, there are two terms that are important. There's mineralization, which is the process of taking organic nitrogen and turn it into inorganic nitrogen. So the organic comes from that dead and decaying material and you make it into nitrates or ammonium or ammonia, inorganic, or the opposite term, which is immobilization, which would be to take the inorganic nitrogen, the nitrates or ammonia, and convert it or add in carbon to make it organic nitrogen. So the two terms work together to either change it from organic to inorganic or vice versa within the soil and again the plants can use this as additional nitrogen for assimilation or bacteria will work on these new compounds and remove through reduction and allow the nitrogen to go back into the atmosphere so the cycle between the creation of nitrogen compounds the loss of nitrogen compounds for it to go back into the atmosphere or the internal movement of organic to inorganic happens as well between mineralization and immobilization. Here is a cycle in its entirety which includes both the nitrogen fixation from the atmosphere into the soil, the activity of bacteria throughout the whole system within the soil, both to assimilate, both to fixate, to change nitrogen, which is nitrification, and also to remove nitrogen, which is denitrification, back in the atmosphere. And we can also add in both the cycling of organic to inorganic and vice versa, which is mineralization and mineralization, and obviously include the presence of vegetation and the biomass, which is going to use that changed nitrogen for plant growth and plant function. But you can also add in the impact and changes that c occur to the cycle due to human activity, most commonly through the burning and consumption of fossil fuels through cars, transportation, factories, industries, and also the natural element of volcanoes. Any eruptions will add additional nitrogen in the atmosphere as well. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.